You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Our theme for the bumper music today is uh, TV shows, black and white. Uh, this theme song, Gunsmoke? You are correct. Two for two. That's right. Even Did, sleep deprived, you're, yeah, you're, you're on a roll. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. Did you ever see uh, Gunsmoke in uh, its reruns? Reruns, uh, yes. Okay, yes. My that, dad's a big Western fan, so I've seen him. Yes, I got to, I guess I live at a time when uh, they were actually brand new shows uh, <laughs> that going on yeah. then. Uh, did you know that Gunsmoke, I think, uh, is probably the longest running TV series ever except for, uh, no, it's the longest TV series ever. Right. Okay, but there is one character from another show that has been on more times than any of the characters in Gunsmoke. How could that be? Is that Frazier? Oh, man, I can't. My good? Yes. Uh, that's right. I can't uh, trap you either. That's yeah. right, because of Cheers, Cheers and then Frazier. Yes. Uh, nice. The character uh, Frazier Crane was uh, the longest playing character on TV. I think I knew about Gunsmoke. I get that and Bonanza confused sometimes, but I would have said Gunsmoke. Oh. For yeah. longest running. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a big difference. With, uh, <laughs> I assume there is. With the Bonanza uh, <laughs> theme song. But uh, anyway. Uh, Welcome back. Uh, As I said, uh, this is where you live, and I'm broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. Before we get into our next story, I'd like to let our listeners know that we have a free gift for you. We put together a bi-monthly newsletter called What's New. A lot of what we talk about on the show, we talk about further detail in the newsletter. People that are on the show contribute to the newsletter. People say it's a great resource if you live in an HOA. It's yours for free for the asking. Give us a call at New Concepts during the week at 952-922-2500. Ask for Lori. She'll make sure that you start receiving your subscription either electronically or by mail. Now, uh, the first story we were talking about were some people who were upset and upset because uh, when they didn't exercise their uh, their rights that they had to express their concerns. Uh, now they get upset when the city council uh, makes a decision that they don't like, and they say, how can this be? The same thing is kind of happening. Now we're going to take a look at it on an HOA scale here. And this is in Ivy Falls. And it says uh, the Ivy Falls homeowners are divided over the fact that the association has been revived. Now, it's a very unusual thing. You know, most uh, homeowner associations, once they're established, they continue on in uh, functioning. It's uh, very uh, infrequent to have someone say, you know what, we're going to dissolve the association. Very difficult if you live in a condo association or a townhome because you've got units that are attached to one another. And if you uh, said we're dissolving the association, now you're going to have some even bigger battles on uh, how do you uh, take care of issues that are shared items between uh, neighbors. So much more difficult thing to have uh, take place. Uh, it does happen, though. I, I've seen condo condominiums dissolve. We had one in our, our portfolio at New Concepts uh, that uh, the person, uh, we saw the association dissolve, and then it went to an investor owner as uh, an apartment building. But here was a case in Ivy Falls. These are all single-family detached homes. So from that standpoint, it wasn't a big issue. The yearly association assessments weren't a big deal either. I think it was somewhere between one to two hundred dollars a year, and that was for uh, maintaining some monuments and some uh, landscaping, and you know a few items uh, such as that. Otherwise, every homeowner dealt with everything. But the homeowner association, back in October of 2010, the board at their meeting, uh, they said they voted to dissolve the association. And after October of 2010, nobody was asking for yearly assessments anymore. Nobody 
was uh, writing any letters from the board. It was a self-managed board. They all, the people that were on the board as of 2010, walked away. They thought everything was done. Everything was dissolved. Now, speed up to 2014, and people are upset because a group of homeowners formed a board and they started sending out a statement saying, hey, everybody owes money going back for a few years, and so now you owe uh, about uh, three years' worth of year, uh, yearly assessments. And people are just are, are just a few and mad. They're saying, hey, wait a minute. We dissolved. It's been dissolved for a number of years. Nobody's been asking for money. Everybody's been on their own. What's the big deal here? And uh, some of the people that were upset were back on the board back in 2010. Uh, one is a woman by the name of Cynthia Sager. And Ms. Sager said, uh, no, you can't do this. So she tried uh, quickly to get a uh, legal uh, advertisement in uh, the Columbia County News Times giving notice that the association had dissolved back in October of 2010, more than three years ago, by a board vote. The problem is uh, that we've got a same issue here. Uh, you have people who, in this case, had become apathetic. Homeowners who chose to be clueless and unattentive towards their HOA, okay? And now they're protesting the fact that they said, well, we thought this was dissolved. We shouldn't have to uh, do this again. We're not an association, okay? And uh, this is the stuff that we see in politics all the time, and it's what gets my ire, and that's what I share on this show week after week when it comes to the, the state legislature, because there you have uh, politicians who at, uh, at best are ignorant about a situation and don't know the facts before they make a law. Politicians who want to create bad legislative statutes because they're trying to make a name for themselves. But that's not what happened here. What happened here is the association moved to dissolve but it can't necessarily be easily done. Like anything else, they didn't do things by the book. One of the reasons why I'm such a strong advocate for HOAs and HOA associations and their rights is because nobody put a gun to anybody's head that ever purchased a home in a homeowner's association. A person did so on their own uh, accord, by their own wishes, they signed and entered into a purchase agreement. And what is the case, according to all of these 50 states of ours? You will find that there are specific state statutes and laws that are in place that require an HOA to be able to disclose all of the pertinent information of how an HOA is governed, it's called the governing documents. And in most states, homeowners are given a right of rescission. So they're given so many days. In Minnesota, you have five days. So even though you enter into a purchase agreement to buy a home in an HOA, if uh, no one hands you the governing documents and you wait until two days before uh, the closing and you were finally handed the governing documents and you read them, you can show up on the day of the closing and say, we've changed our mind and you can get all your money back and uh, there's nothing that can be done because you have that right of rescission. Well, people have this right to be able to decide whether or not they want to live in that community. They want to live and abide by those guidelines, by those rules. Everybody did that before they went into the Ivy Falls Homeowners Association. So you, if you're going to agree to that, you have to abide by the rules, by the laws in the governing documents. And in this particular case, the uh, HOA board didn't follow through in accordance with that. And that's one of the serious problems. If there's a problem that I see 
that takes place in an HOA today is because boards of directors in an HOA say, well, because we're smaller, uh, because we're neighbors, because we're more familiar, uh, we don't have to go through all of that real rigmarole, do we? We don't have to be that uh, specific and that formal. And my answer is, yes, you do. You can't be sloppy and inconsistent and not careful to follow the law. You need to remember, as a homeowners association, you're still considered a registered corporation in the state where your association is. So like a corporation, you need to act like one. You have to, do, you have, to have a business sense about you. So you need to go through things properly. What should have the Ivy Falls Homeowners Association uh, do have done instead? Well, the the board made the right uh, first steps. They decided that they wanted to dissolve. The next step would have been for them to have gotten a special meeting of the homeowners. And when they have a proper quorum of the homeowners that are there, go through and tell them of their desire to dissolve, and then ask for a vote. And when something like that needs to take place, your governing documents are going to specifically state when something is that drastic and you're changing the governing uh, documents, in this case to dissolve, you need a supermajority of all homeowners. It probably would have been the case that a majority would have said, yes, let's dissolve. But because they didn't do that, they didn't go through the process, the Homeowner Association wasn't dissolved. It was just dormant for a few years. After the association had gotten that supermajority vote, then they needed to do the next step, which would be to get an attorney to uh, write that up and have it recorded on the deeds of all the property in the association. Now and forevermore, it's documented, done correctly, and they wouldn't have been in this situation. So you can't just do something halfway and say, well, it's not expected of me. The same, uh, the, the same kind of responsibility that we expect of our other governing officials also follow through to people on the board as well. And so if uh, Ivy Falls wants to dissolve, I hope they do it, but they do it the proper way. Well, we're going to take a break. Don't go away. Another segment of Where You Live after these messages. 